Now, um, so, uh, uh, having discussed the nature, but I mentioned that this, this is just one of the sources of obligations, okay, under 1157. There are other sources, four other sources. In other words, given a certain scenario, for example, uh, the case of uh, Saludaga versus FEU, 2008 case, okay, where a student of uh, FEU, a sophomore law student, was shot by a security guard, okay, and uh, of course he survived. He sued FEU. Uh, what possible liabilities may arise? Is it possible for uh, a liability to arise under quasi-delict? Of course. Uh, who may be held liable? The employer of uh, the security guard. But can FEU be held liable under quasi-delict? The answer is no, said the Supreme Court, because FEU was not the employer of the security guard. But even if FEU cannot be held liable under that source of obligation, quasi-delic, it doesn't mean that FEU cannot be held liable at all. In fact, in this case, FEU was held liable under a contract. Because when a student enrolls in a school or university, okay, a contract is entered into, and in that contract, one of the obligations of the school is to maintain a peaceful environment conducive to learning. Okay, This contract was violated by FEU when it relegated the evaluation of uh, the qualifications of security guards to the security agency. Walang ginawa ang school in relation to the qualifications of uh, the security guards, okay? So, uh, again, given a certain scenario, it is possible that uh, a liability may arise not necessarily from one source, but from the other sources, okay? In one given scenario, okay? Now, um, is this, is the right to enter into a contract a purely statutory right, okay? If you remember, I uh, noticed you have already, or uh, uh, Dean Navarro discussed with you uh, succession already. And uh, authors like uh, Justice Simpudi would take the position that uh, the right to enter in, the right to execute a will or to make a will is a purely statutory right. Is the right to enter into a contract similar, the same in the sense that uh, it is a purely statutory right? I don't think so. This right is protected under the Constitution, okay? There is a clause in the Constitution known as the non-impairment clause, okay? Not even the state can uh, uh, violate the rights of uh, the parties to a contract, okay? With exception, of course, uh, uh, if it is in the exercise of police power, okay? Now, uh, then, uh, one last, marriage. Is marriage a contract? As a contract is defined under 1305, obviously it is not, okay? In fact, the family code would consider it as a special contract, okay? Why so special? Well, there are differences okay, between this special, this contract, and contracts under the civil code. Example, who may be the parties to this contract? Under the family code, as to marriage, the parties can only be a male and a female. Well, in contracts, it doesn't matter. Male with male, female with female, it doesn't matter. Now, the governing law, what primarily would govern the rights and obligations of the parties to a contract? The answer is the stipulations, okay? The terms and conditions agreed upon by the parties that would primarily govern, of course, subject to the limitation that they are not contrary to law, morals, etc. Right? 
But as far as marriage is concerned, of course, primarily the rights and obligations of uh, the spouses shall be governed by law, not by their stipulation. Okay? Except yung property relations nila. To the contrary, opposite. Okay? Finally, of course, termination. Nako, there are so many modes of termination or extinguishment of contracts. Okay? Uh, but uh, marriage uh, ordinarily would be extinguished only by the death of one of the parties, till death do us part, diba? Except, of course, if there is annulment, declaration, even declaration of nullity is not uh, extinguishment or termination because in the first place, the marriage did not exist. It's just a mere, mere declaration of the nullity of the marriage, okay? Now, uh, into this... Uh, Definition, okay? Um, in every concept, okay? Uh, I would, uh, I always would recommend that uh, a student or a review we examine he should try to memorize at least the definition of the concept, okay? I have not ever demanded from a student that uh, he memorized all the provisions sa civil code of the Philippines, okay? But at least the definition, okay? From the definition, you would, you may be able to answer some questions because these definitions would actually capsulize the essence of the concept, di ba? Pinaghirapan nila ang mga definition na ito. But there are also defects, allegedly. Okay? Some of these definitions are defective. Example, as to contracts, the law defines a contract uh, is a meeting of the minds between two persons. Okay? In other words, there should be two persons in order for a contract to be perfected. But the question here is, may a contract, may a person contract with himself? Okay? In other words, may there be Rights and obligations arising from a contract, even if only one person participated in the execution of the contract. The answer is yes. This contract is known as an auto contract. Okay? A person okay, may contract with himself. In one capacity, representing another person, and in another capacity for himself, acting for himself, or even acting for another person, okay? A good uh, example of an auto contract is when a person is authorized to borrow money, okay? Uh, if he is authorized to borrow money, can he himself be the lender? Under the law, yes. The only limitation provided by law is that the interest must be the market rate. In other words, in that loan agreement, he will be signing as representative of the principal of the borrower, but he will also be signing as the, uh, for himself, as the lender. Okay? This is an auto contract and this is a valid contract. This may be a valid contract. 